Welcome back to Anecdotal Evidence. I'm your host, Daniel Johnson, MD. So welcome back to the podcast. This is an ongoing document of conversations that I've had with folks who practice the healing arts or have particular healing stories that they like to share from their own lives or from their work. And I've been trying to collect a diversity of conversations amongst guests. And today we're going to kind of recap where the past seven conversations have taken us and what I've learned from them and what kinds of questions they raise uh, for me and for our conversations going forward. The last recap episode was episode nine. It was called AE Beginnings, in which I discussed the origins of the podcast and what I'd learned up to that point. Today we're gonna take a similar approach looking back at these more recent episodes. And this is also a special episode because we're testing out the video format. Uh, The YouTube video for this podcast is going to have a video document of me talking into the microphone that you can look at if you'd like. And I'm trying to test this format to see if it may be conducive for recording the conversations with video because, of course, that adds another element So we'll see how that goes. There's pros and cons with it. There's technical issues with it. Uh, But we're going to see what happens with it. And today we're going to kind of pick things up with where we left off after the last recap episode, episode 9. So episode 10 was with Dr. Robin Saraswati Marcus, who is a local Chinese medicine doctor and acupuncturist and a skilled yoga teacher. Uh, It was a wonderful conversation that we had back in July, which is over six months ago. It's hard to believe. Uh, And I met with her in her office, which is just a beautiful location, a beautiful yoga studio that she converted uh, from an old building that had many incarnations, including a carburetor repair shop. And she's really created a beautiful space there. So we were able to have our conversation there in her office. And she shared her history with how she got into acupuncture in Chinese medicine and also uh, got into yoga around the same time when she was living in California. And she realized that both of these disciplines uh, taught her a great deal about health and raised more questions and more avenues of exploration for her own education and her own journey, including uh, a trip to India in which uh, she discovered uh, her true calling as a teacher, as a Saraswati, which is the name that she goes by now. And I really loved our conversation because she effortlessly seemed to fall into the teaching role Uh, to share what she's learned about the concepts of meditation and yoga and how to work with the body uh, through the Chinese medicine lineage and through the yogic lineage and how she's been able to integrate these two different traditions into one practice, into her practice. And that's a theme that seems to be recurring amongst the guests on the podcast is the schools in which we're trained are often schools that have totally different origins and different backgrounds, and yet we can find something uh, useful and worthwhile from different lineages. And it's up to us to learn how to integrate uh, those teachings and that knowledge into our being, into our practice. And I really think that's a challenge for all of us, as many of the schools of healing uh, come from totally divergent backgrounds, and yet there's something valuable uh, that we can glean from this. And that was one of the things that I really appreciated about Dr. Saraswati's uh, conversation, conversation, is how she learned how to blend those disciplines in her life and her practice and what it means for her teaching. So that was really lovely and that was back in July and later that month uh, I got to sit down with Eddie LeSueur who was the 11th episode and Eddie uh, is a new friend of mine who 
uh, I met last year and was kind enough to uh, teach meditation to a group meeting for my private psychiatric practice when that was still open and that's a whole other story which we'll get into over time here but uh, it was really lo lovely meeting Eddie and uh, from getting to know him just a little bit I thought he'd be a great guest for the podcast and of course he was if you haven't checked out episode 11 uh, I encourage you to do so because he shares a remarkable and incredible story of how a singular event changed his life and what that's meant for him since then and that event that I'm talking about is his, his experience as an inmate in the Attica prison in upstate New York in the early 1970s during the Attica prison riot uh, which he was fortunate enough to survive but he did share the truly traumatic experience of what happened that day what went down during that prison riot and how that trauma has shaped him uh, clearly that was a life-changing experience it sounds uh, totally horrible and uh, very unfortunate but he has been able to uh, learn from that experience and to grow from his experiences since then to the point where he is now a meditation coach uh, he's a substance abuse counselor and he uh, blends these approaches in his work uh, as he practices the healing arts uh, with his par partner Margaret Kirshner so that was a really fascinating uh, story that he shared and one of the things that I, I took from that conversation was he said that without context without building on that trauma then it's just a dramatic story that ends in the early 1970s but of course life goes on after traumas if we survive them and what we do with our life afterwards uh, of course can be a huge challenge and the trauma becomes part of our identity part of our constitution part of our makeup as we're changed by that experience so he shared how he was able to use such a horrible event but to grow from it and to deepen his understanding of life his presence in his own life and uh, what it means to be a survivor so I'm very grateful uh, for the experience of having that conversation with Eddie and I hope you enjoyed that episode and if you haven't checked it out uh, please do so and from there later in the summer I got to sit down with the astronomer Stephen Martin and that was a fascinating conversation in that what Stephen has done is very similar to uh, what I've done in this podcast I was able to identify with the experience that he had where he woke up to a vision that he needed to learn more about existence the meaning of life what this thing of life is that we keep waking up to each day and how we can extract meaning from it and understand it uh, deeper even though knowing that the mystery is going to remain and we're never going to understand it fully and the path that he chose was to record a series of conversations with folks that he looked up to and admired uh, folks from different backgrounds scientists and cultural leaders and spiritual leaders and how the folks from all these different backgrounds are going to have different perspectives uh, that he could learn from and that others could learn from he uh, collected them in a book called Cosmic Conversations uh, which is a wonderful book and uh, I've really enjoyed reading it and I would I would definitely recommend that um, and I, I just really enjoyed our conversation and what was one of the things that we connected about uh, was the fact that he had 
interviewed the NASA astronaut uh, Edgar Mitchell, who was one of my role models and people that I really looked up to. And it was one of my goals to get to sit down with Edgar Mitchell. And so that was what Stephen and I bonded over. And today is a sad day. Here we are, February 6th, 2016. And just an hour ago, I learned that Edgar Mitchell uh, passed two days ago. He was 85 years old. He lived a full life. And for those of you who don't know, Edgar Mitchell uh, was an astronaut on Apollo 14 who uh, recorded the longest moonwalk in history. And during his experience on that Apollo mission, he had a spiritual awakening, uh, an existential breakthrough, a mystical experience, if you will, an experience where he felt the oneness of the entire cosmos uh, from being a human being in space. And it changed his life dramatically. Uh, He ended up retiring from NASA and founding the Institute for Noetic Studies and dedicating his life to the scientific understanding of the phenomenon of consciousness which of course is a monumental undertaking, but I'm very grateful and I think all of mankind is very fortunate to have uh, folks like Edgar Mitchell taking on these tasks and beginning to uh, investigate this phenomenon of consciousness through an objective lens so that we can understand it deeper. I've got a couple of his books right here. Uh, This is The Way of the Explorer, which is one of his autobiographies, and I've really enjoyed reading this book. And another one of his books is Psychic Exploration, A Challenge for Science, which is a very large book, and I've only skimmed parts of this. But it just reflects to me the immense scope of studying a phenomenon as total as the phenomenon of consciousness, but that if we don't start somewhere, uh, we're never going to get anywhere with it. And I really admire Edgar Mitchell uh, for the work that he did after his work with NASA. And he was a true pioneer and a true inspiration to many folks. He had been on a number of podcasts over the past decade. Uh, The podcast format was conducive to longer conversations with Edgar Mitchell, and he enjoyed it. And one of my goals was to eventually speak with him on the podcast. And of course, today I've learned that, you know, that's not going to happen as he's passed from this earth. But I was very grateful to get a chance to speak with Stephen Martin, who did speak with Edgar Mitchell, and he shared in our conversation what a joy it was to sit down with him and to see some of his artifacts from the moon and to hear directly firsthand uh, from his experience in that lunar mission. And so this is a sad day as the whole world mourns his loss. And it's just a reminder of how life is short and fragile. And if we're going to want to achieve our goals, there's no time like the present because we are not guaranteed our next breath. So thank you to Stephen Martin for sharing with us. Uh, I really enjoyed meeting him and getting a chance to talk with him more. And that was in episode 12. And then episode 13 is with the therapist Cricket Greer. And we had a lovely conversation uh, in the early fall. And Cricket has a fascinating uh, background from many different disciplines. She's a dancer, talented singer, therapist across different modalities. She's a massage therapist, a yoga teacher, 
she's also a trained psychotherapist and she works in her partner Vishnu Das who also has been on the podcast of course episode 7 and she works in his practice his Ayurvedic practice so her life is yet another example of integrating different training modalities into one practice into one person's being and she shared with us how she's been able to do that how she's been able to learn uh, from a variety of different fields at different stages in her life you know at different times in our life different schools are going to present themselves to us and we're going to be students of different disciplines and our learning is going to take on a different character based on those different disciplines and we get to learn about different aspects of our own personality our own character and so from there that leads to our next episode which is episode 14 with Caroline Proctor who also manages to integrate two very different disciplines into one life. She's a practicing Presbyterian minister, pastoring a church, and she also practices Chinese medicine and acupuncture. Two totally different fields uh, with different origins and different backgrounds, but she's been able to find the relevance from these two different fields in her one life. And she's developed an ability to practice in both of these fields simultaneously in a way that is comfortable to her and she shared what she learns what ha what she has learned from these different disciplines and uh, it was a fascinating conversation as I got to see how we go deeper when we open ourselves up to wisdom from other backgrounds when we learn how to open our minds to uh, schools that may uh, have areas of conflict but to learn how to individually uh, resolve that conflict uh, in a way that is satisfying and oftentimes that just means acknowledging the mystery that is beyond both of those fields so I, I just found that fascinating uh, and inspiring because I think we're all often kind of caught between two different schools and we don't know how to harmoniously resolve that tension. But that is the challenge that uh, we have to rise to. And that's what true integration means. Uh, you know, that word gets used a lot, but the practice of it is uh, one that I think is a challenge to, to each of us individually. And at, at this stage in the podcast, I was really beginning to develop a sense of thematic pursuit in the conversations, a flow, how one conversation could flow into another. And at this point, I was interested in the learning a little bit more of the balance between uh, or, or the relationship between faith and healing, belief in healing. And that led me to my next guest, which was Caroline's recommendation, uh, and somebody who I was also very excited to meet, uh, the Reverend Brian Combs, who pastors the Haywood Street congregation here in Asheville which is uh, a mission congregation and I encourage you to check out their website and check out their uh, their church because it's an active church that ministers to all and truly has its doors open to all uh, including folks who may be homeless folks who may be diagnosed with mental illness folks who are down and, that, down and out, maybe suffering from physical illness, maybe sub, suffering from substance dependence. And Brian is an inspirational figure uh, with unique talents and gifts. And 
he is someone who has dedicated his life to learning from every individual and finding what is sacred in every individual he meets. Uh, it was clear that he understands that his life's purpose is to continuously open himself up to, to new experience, to learning from each individual he encounters. And I was just deeply inspired by getting to meet him and to uh, get to hear from him directly what his mission work and what his ministry means and how that relates to true community healing. You know, this, the work that they do there, they have a mental health respite, which is a place where uh, folks in mental health crisis can uh, stay for a night or a couple nights and you know have some uh, have a hot meal and a safe place to stay as they're just figuring things out it's a it's not a medical model it's a respite model and it's a different approach to mental health crisis than the medical model but it's often just what folks are looking for just what folks may need and it's just a way of stepping up to meet the community's needs to really fill that sense of community healing and provide individuals with uh, true compassion. So again, I'm very grateful to Brian for what he shared. And from there, I explored the concept of faith uh, from yet another angle uh, through my conversation with Rob Wurgen, the last guest on the podcast. And Rob is a neighbor of mine who I just happened to meet uh, from walking my dogs. Uh, and over time, I learned that he practices the healing arts uh, through what he refers to as transformation, uh, in which he channels healing energy uh, for his clients, uh, which is uh, it's a controversial field, uh, but... Rob, as a person, I find warm and engaging and committed to helping. You know, he, he shared his personal crisis of how he got into this work of transformation, how life had broken him down. And I think we've all been broken down uh, at various points in our life. And it's when we're in that state of breakdown sometimes that we're able to open up to a new way of thinking, a new concept regarding our healing. You know, sometimes we're not able to achieve healing because we just feel like we it has to be the one way. And if we're just able to open ourselves up, that it's another way. And to, to open our minds, then we're able to receive uh, something new and something different, which we may have been closed off to before. And this requires the concept of faith or the concept of belief. And it's very similar to the medical model's concept of the placebo effect, which is a very real phenomenon and it's a very powerful phenomenon and it's mysterious. And there's such an overlap between this placebo effect and energy healing or faith healing or opening ourselves up to transformation with the help of another individual which is the art form that Rob practices. And he shared his work uh, in a very frank and straightforward manner, uh, which takes great courage because a lot of times our society uh, wants to greet that type of work with skepticism, which I'm not arguing for or against. But what I'm suggesting is that if we're able to listen to each other and have a real conversation with an open mind, then that's when we're able to discover new things about health and healing that we weren't aware of before, that we may have never thought of before. And having that open mind and that welcoming approach, which Brian Combs spoke of, is just what we need sometimes to make our breakthrough. And so 
I think it's very important for us as a society to have room at the table for those whose practices and approaches we may not understand or we may not uh, believe in or we may not agree with, but if folks are not doing harm in their practice and they're willing to work with other people's sense of belief and deepening that sense of belief, that sense of hope, that may be a common pathway to triggering this mysterious force within us, which sometimes we call the placebo effect. Sometimes we call the inner healer or other words. Of course, it's bigger than words. Words are trying to capture this huge concept and and boil it down. And we're never fully going to be able to do that with words, I, I don't think. But if we're able to create some space and room for folks who dedicate themselves to that approach, then who knows, maybe we may learn something or maybe we may find some healing in ourselves, in our own lives that we didn't have before. So I really thank Rob for sharing what he did uh, with with me in in our conversation. And I really appreciate where it took me in this journey. Because, you know, now at this point, I've opened up to more ideas and more approaches to tapping into this placebo effect. And while my particular work is not going to necessarily have the same uh, approach or same uh, characterization as um, any of the other healers in the podcast, I know that the, the concept of opening and listening are what deepens the empathy, which is the connection that we need to work together, practitioner and client, uh, in a spirit of camaraderie, uh, togetherness, to uh, find this elusive inner healer and to learn how to tap into it, uh, because it's going to require something bigger than our total understanding. Uh, And if we approach it with uh, humility and respect, then we're much more likely to be able to find it together. So those are the themes and the threads which have woven their way through this body of work in this ongoing podcast uh, in this next chapter which I think I'm going to call participation because that placebo effect, that inner healer is one that we have to believe in and we have to dedicate our consciousness to believe in it, to open ourselves up to it if we're going to be able to utilize it. And that requires our participation. So, one of the words that gets used a lot in alternative health or uh, more, a more enlightened view of health is integration, which is a word that I believe in. Another word is holistic, which is another word I believe in. But oftentimes, words get overplayed or overused, and I think you know we could make a case how either of those words are overused. Uh, But yet there's still a value to to each of them when we think of them appropriately. And the word that does not seem to get overused at this time, but it could, you know, a month, a week, a year from now, but that I find valuable over and over again is the word participation. And my usage of that word is how do we channel our active consciousness in the direction of the healing path. And that requires us to participate. And at the same time, it requires us to not let our ego, our mind's uh, affiliation with our individuality and our separateness get in the way of the inner healer which is an unconscious force that we're hoping 
to activate through our participation. So we have to participate and be active in our consciousness and at the same time make room for something beyond our level of understanding. So that word participation is the word that I'm going to use to subtitle this episode of the podcast, AE17. So at this point, I want to say thank you for tuning in to this recap, and thank you for tuning in to Anecdotal Evidence. This has been a very exciting journey for me thus far, and I look forward to sharing more of it uh, with you in the episodes to come, which is very exciting because I've already got some recorded conversations with folks that I'm looking forward to sharing. Uh, The local painter, artist, uh, Julian Davis, His conversation is going to be coming up next, uh, which is a a fascinating study. And after that, uh, you're going to hear my conversation with the meditation teacher and the Theravada Buddhist monk Bhante Ujodhika, which is a fascinating conversation from a different background. Uh, He's the real deal, practicing Buddhist monk, and just a lovely individual, and I really enjoyed talking with him. And I've also got a conversation coming up with the local musician, Chris Wilhelm, my first musical guest on the podcast, and he shares what the healing power of music has meant for him in his life and how he shares that with others and Uh, He's just a beautiful musician. He played three songs for us that you'll get to hear. So this is all very exciting, and uh, I'm excited to share it with you. Other exciting potential guests down the road. So once again, thank you for tuning in to Anecdotal Evidence. Another beautiful day here in Asheville. You get to see the sunshine behind me here. It's cold and sunny. But just a beautiful day and uh, a great time to to share with y'all through this next episode. And once again, uh, rest in peace, Edgar Mitchell. You will be missed, but you've been quite an inspiration. So thanks again to the guests, and thanks to you for tuning in. I'll catch you next episode. Till then, it's Daniel Johnson, MD. Take care.